Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Phil Jost, happy to be here. And uh, if you're joining me today, um, if you click in, you're going uh, um, on the chat, you're welcome to chat me up. And uh, we're obviously, we're discussing every week, we're discussing on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. That's 10 Mountain where I live. Uh, Pacific Coast, you can go 9 a.m., maybe right after morning roll call and all that kind of stuff. You can join us for training. <clears throat> and we're always doing reading smoke. I do get a lot of questions about tactics and stuff, and I do teach tactics. But uh, these posts, uh, Reading Smoke with Phil Jost, this is episode 42, I think. I do one every week, which means we're 10 weeks away from having a year under, under our belt here together. Uh, but... As always, if you're in the chat and you want to say hi, go ahead and uh, hit me up there. Don't get a lot of chat, um, but would like to start getting in. Oh, there's Tony. <laughs> hey, Tony. Uh, we're streaming your, we're streaming Tony Bendelli's video today, and we're going to be doing it live. So, um, Tony, as much as I can, I'll be checking the chat. If I get something wrong or something you want to throw in there, uh, please, uh, please be my guest as, as I'm using your video. And thanks for posting the video. Uh, you know, as soon as I saw this video, I subscribed to Tony's website. He's got a, or his YouTube page. He's got a bunch of cool stuff on there. And uh, really like to support anybody who's out there posting live fire video. Just want to support all the brothers and sisters out there. And, and a lot of civilians. A lot of civilians posting this stuff. So, Tony, thanks again. Uh, I do have some... Uh, I missed my subscribers last week. So, shout out to the new subscribers. Uh, David McGee. Uh... K E O M F M F F E M T. So I'm not sure if that's that FM is fire marshal or if you're a radio disc jockey, but uh, welcome aboard. Uh, William Wicker, uh, Benjamin Sims, um, Caleb Etchison. Etchison? Sorry, Caleb, if I got that name wrong, I'm always trying to do that right. And Mr. Firefighter B, welcome to the Reading Smoke Nation. And uh, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, we're streaming Tony's video live today, um, so not from a recording, but directly from YouTube. Um, 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 if I can, I'd like to do that, um, just because I think there's some uh, feedback mechanism in the background with all the ones and zeros in the internet world that gets some uh, a little more credit or direction over towards whoever site I'm using. And uh, today we're going to look at, uh, yesterday on the SBSK, really just looked at one still frame. We're going to review that today, but we're going to take a little bit longer look at the video and see some of the action and what we can read from the building as we're going along. Okay, so let's get it started. And, you know, one of the things we that I always like to think about as we're rolling in, and we can see from the rig's placement, right, going off screen here, that they went by this particular property. So they would have had a good look I think at three sides of the structure as they came in and just from the volume right we're always looking at volume velocity density color uh, is there tons of volume sure right uh, turbulence all the way up into the sky thick and black right so significant working fire that we can tell right from here right there. Right up, uh, play for I'm gonna go ahead and kill the audio though so you don't have trouble see hearing me um, but here's basically the view I, I got the the uh, officer out of there this time but here's the basic view that we're looking at uh, at the SBSK post yesterday we, we did spend a lot of time on it. I won't spend as much time today uh, but if you haven't seen that just want to view remember it's always VVDC right volume velocity density color and we want to get our mind's eye right when we talk about our mind's eye what we're seeing and how we're interpreting things the fire the fire is going to tell us everything we need to see immediately and unfortunately your brain and your is designed your eyes are attracted to light and motion which fire provides in abundance right but we want to get our eyes off of this really quickly we can see there's a lot of exterior fire here extending all the way from the bottom to the top and it's not going to tell us much we can start to do our inventory and we're going to want to look at the rest of the structure right a little bit of off gassing from down here and then we can see in here this window is open and it looks like maybe it's a partial intake right now but there definitely was uh, we can see here we can read smoke and um, some blackness on the side it tells us here now I'm, I'm not sure if this fire started inside and moved out or started outside and moved in um, but it doesn't 
it doesn't change what we're doing we're just reading the spoke to see where it's going next and so we continue if we continue down this uh, delta side right here we're going to see window here window here and I, i'm sure there's windows in behind this if we if i checked it forward a little bit um we probably see that but really no smoke there might be some small volumes of smoke coming out of here we're just looking at the still frame um, but nothing significant, right? Not any sort of high volume, nothing coming out with uh, force, with turbulence, right? Uh, no velocity behind any smoke coming out down here or on the roof, right? So even though it's inside this room right now, um, it's not extending very rapidly to the rest of the structure and most of our problem is exterior, right? So these bedrooms, uh, this whole upstairs right now is likely to be clear not much coming from the attic we could end up with an attic fire up there certainly but it does not look like we have one yet and so our our searches and some other stuff that we might do back here might not might be relatively uh, simple to conduct right now probably if there's smoke up there it's probably light um very uh not light but uh, low volume very thin right so we'd be able to see probably 10 to 12 to 15 feet up here which means visually we could do those searches very very quickly so I'm um, going to let it play forward though um, and if you want a little more of that section go ahead and click over to the SBSK Facebook post there's the links in the show notes here and we're going to let this roll forward and ah, I missed it there we did get a little a little better view down the side of the structure here uh, see if I can grab it and boom there we go a little bit better look it re just reinforces what we've seen already um, nothing major going on down there some smoke in between but nothing really uh, dramatic nothing that the changes our read that we made right from that get-go um, one of the questions and I think this is a much easier place to see it that I had uh, people PM me and you can always uh, PM me or just um, make a comment on either these videos or the Facebook site and I answer all those comments but one of the questions was basement fire possibly right it you know we wouldn't know until we read the smoke and we can look down here here's going to be your juncture between the basement the basement's uh, got a little bit of um it's partially exposed right it's not a it's not a, a full uh, basement where it's all below grade so you got three or four feet here and you'd expect to see if there was this much fire and it started in the basement i would anticipate seeing pretty significant smoke from somewhere along this edge right that I can't rule it out here, but my tendency would be to say, yeah, that's, I don't think that's my primary problem. Uh, certainly if we could get by a window and we could look inside, it, it'd be nice. But just right from here, um, it, with this much fire, I would expect to see, uh, if it had extended from the basement, I would expect to see pretty significant sign along this edge. Um, and the fact that we're not doing that now um, still something to be checked more deliberately but in my mind I can pretty much check that box pretty clearly all right we're gonna go the next place I want to stop is right about the 54 second mark excuse me while I grab a drink taking care of their water supply issues here and we're gonna let this um, roll forward there's a couple of spots in here where we get a pretty good look at um, the fire now here's here's a I mean really a clear shot but it's not telling us much because you can't see that side the whole front's in, engulfed and then I can't really see down the side what is interesting to me here though is we are auto, auto, um, getting some auto exposure over to this Bravo right this is starting to catch on fire I don't see any significant sign there's some smoke drifting over here, but I don't see significant sign here that the fire has already extended inside the structure. Um, and certainly this auto exposure is something that's going to want to get dealt with, but not a fire inside that uh, Bravo exposure just yet. In the 15 seconds or so, uh, Tony's going to give us a good look, another good look at the structure. And I'll pause it again. okay now we can see a little right and i don't know there was a little gap in there so i don't know how long that was how much video got cut out um i would guess a minute or so 
Um, but there was a, definitely a cut in the video because this fire here is much more significant than it was before. And we can see a little bit down through the middle here, though not, not a ton, right? Again, not seeing any sign here that is extended into this structure, mostly surface right there as the fire attack gets underway. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll forward just a bit here. Right, and here we go. So this is another good look, but we can see a really nice uh, job right here. Just in 30 seconds or so, the fire's out here. It certainly needs to be overhauled, uh, but significant knockdown. And look at look at the difference in the volume and density up here. I mean, just just a killer difference. Um, again, we're they're not anywhere near done, right? We're just talking about being able to see. Are we having a positive impact yet? Yeah, now we can look down and we can actually see the side, the Bravo side of the primary fire building uh, with a little bit of a clear view. And we're gonna roll forward a little bit more. Um, I'll just let it play through here um, as we're gonna get to, just before the two minute mark, we're gonna get a nice, uh, really nice look at the Bravo side as additional lines are getting laid. This, you can see now the supplies charged. From a tactics perspective, these are the things like, uh, you know, I never really have talked about this. Uh, this is a good spot though. I, I hadn't thought about this when I first watched this video, but one of the things that um, one of my mentors taught me when I became a chief officer is as you're walking in, you're really trying to take a sense of the rhythm and flow and of what's going on. And what I what's nice here is that you're seeing that these, the supply lines get in charge, the first attack lines are being charged and operated, second lines are being stretched. Right, so if, if I was able to combine that um, in my organization that I worked in with the radio traffic, I'd have a really nice sense of um, whether or not things were going, the rhythm and flow was all in the right direction. Right now, I can't say that from these, I'm just saying that um, when I look at this, I go, oh yeah, well the supply line was getting stretched, now it's charged, right? That's a box I can check. Lines are being operated, check. Li additional lines are being stretched, check. I'm, I'm looking at those things and make, getting a sense of the fire itself, right? And that's more of a tactics discussion than a, than a smoke reading discussion, but just thought I'd throw that in, that little little shot there. Okay, now, look at this. Really nice shot. Uh, and I probably could listen to what this guy's telling me. Um, okay, let's see. So. Uh, Tony's telling me that uh, something the video doesn't show right about that point. So I guess it's probably that point, maybe 30 seconds ago. Uh, a resident is kicking in the door on the CD corner trying to get their stuff out of the house. Yeah, civilians, uh, yeah, it, it, I'm always aware that the video doesn't show anything, but it just shows you how motivated people are to get their stuff, right? And certainly something we're going to have to keep an eye on, especially if somebody goes into a place like this. All of a sudden now uh, we've got a high priority. We know for sure, right, we have somebody inside there. We've got to get them out. High priority. Maybe that's what uh, this fellow is telling us. But a nice view down the Bravo side and really significant impact of this water. And because there's pretty significant fire st still going here, I suspect it's still in that one room. But we're not getting any significant signs of smoke down this Bravo side. Uh, and here we go, we're gonna get right down the side of the building here. Okay, look here. Smoke here, yes, right? But really nothing, a little bit, right? Um, and when I'm saying nothing, I'm, I'm, I'm saying nothing that's causing me maximum concern or really high level of concern on this side. A little bit out of here, yeah, definitely. So this is definitely that room that we saw from the other side. Uh, significant uh, fire there but and do all these rooms have smoke in them yes right uh, yes they do but I, it's not seeing significant extension in there right now from these windows smoke coming out this window yes but here's a really great view um, of the juncture between the basement and the first floor and this this right here for me completely rules out basement fire not only do I not have any smoke pushing out here but these windows look just fine Right, and if the fire had been going down here enough to get this huge volume of fire on the alpha side, then you'd see that. 
you'd see that in these windows, right? Uh, you'd see that for sure. Uh, we're gonna, Tony's gonna make his way down here, right? Windows broken, there's drift, right? There's not heavy, there's not uh, high volume, turbulent, thick black smoke, there's, there's some drift coming out of this window. And uh, then again, there's another cut to the to the video itself. Uh, something that um, again, I'm not sure how long that's taken, but now there we're here on the starting to, the firefight, trying to get in that in that room, right? Trying to get in that space. And the, that's the notes that um, I had from a reading smoke perspective. Tony, you'll, we'll we'll take a look here. Tony gets inside this thing. And as always, a very limited ability to look at a helmet cam and see what's going on. Although I'm sure Tony can narrate every second of this for us, let us know what's going on. Um, but uh, just to get us back to where we started, right? We're always looking at volume, velocity, density, color. We get a really quick read here at on this side of the building. And what I, what I was talking about is making sure that when you're reading the smoke at the fire, and certainly when you're practicing, when you're watching these videos or you're practicing with your crew uh, is trying to is understand what's going on so that you can train your mind's eye to do this stuff really quickly uh, because there's a lot of information here that's available in a in a really short just as you're walking to this other as you're walking to the rig getting ready to stretch your line as you're driving in there's a lot of information available and it doesn't cost you time to get it it just costs you attention and practice and training all right, um, that was our uh, first second. Then we then we were in the zone right here, right where we got a good another good look at the front of the building, and then um, in this minute and a half, two minute mark right in here, where we get another good look at the side of the structure, and we get to join Tony in a walk down the down the Bravo side. Right, each of these is reinforcing what we've already looked at. Right, so. We're not seeing anything that's dramatically different than the other side. I get this fire knocked down, get inside there, and sort of be uh, off to the races as far as making a uh, making a good stop on this place. All right. So as always, uh, Tony, thanks again. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for telling us about the spilling, getting the stuff out of there. Thanks for posting the video uh, to all the subscribers out there. Really appreciate uh, everybody being part of the Reading Smoke Nation. Uh, you'll be able to see me. Um, I have a list of my classes that are in the show notes here with links where possible to registration. Of course, uh, first up, uh, August 4th, 1030, you can uh, join me at FDIC. Then after that, Channel View, Texas. I'll be up in Washington in the Squim area. Be in McMinnville, Oregon later in the year. Uh, and at uh, Columbus for Firehouse Expo couple other I'm, I'm really busy in the fall looking forward to seeing everybody um, hit me up in the comments um, if you like these if you'd like to use them for training if you have questions or if you have a link to a video you want me to take a look at uh, consider using for my uh, weekly posts I appreciate that it's it's nice to get somebody uh, point out a video for me so I don't have to hunt and peck for them especially now that I've used uh, you know, so many on SBSK, and here, you know, we're, we're 50, 60 videos in, and uh, just want to make sure that we're getting something new, something engaging, something enter entertaining, and uh, something educational for you each week. All right. And with that, uh, for episode 42 of Reading Smoke with Phil Jose, I'm Phil Jose, and uh, thank you for being here. I'm out.